All right, I'm back. So, um, my first round of tests, as you saw from the last video, didn't go super great. IMR4227 is not the right powder. Um, it was just short stroking. So I'm sure I could have gotten it to cycle. I'm sure I could have gotten it to work, but we would have been way past the accuracy node. We would have been too fast. So um, it's not the right powder. So I've gotten lots of recommendations. I've done a lot of reading. Um, the two ones that people keep saying over and over is H4895 and H335. Um, so I guess 4895 is specifically designed to make a lot of gas volume and H335, a lot of people are reporting really good accuracy with it, um, with these specific cast bullets. So um, I was going to go with 4895, but then I just priced them quickly online at my local uh, sportsman's warehouse. H335 is a little cheaper, so I'm just going to go with that. Um, and I've also found there's a lot of people on YouTube who have been having good success with this bullet and also with other similar bullets um, and similar rifles using the H335, so I think I can get it to work. Um, <clears throat> so I should note, I cannot find any published load data for either of these powders for this bullet. So the Lee 255 uh, or 225 55 grain cast flat point, or the, uh, it's, I think the Lee is basically a clone of the Lyman, what is it, 225415 number mold, something like that. Um, so I, I'm kind of using those two bullet cast, uh, or those two cast bullet load data interchangeably when I can find it, and I can find load data for those bullets, just not for these specific powders and those bullets together. So it's kind of annoying because I'm not going to be able to estimate pressure or velocity very well, um, but oh well. I mean, I can still tell if it's cycling correctly and if it's uh, accurate or not, even if I don't know the numbers behind that. So. That's what I'm going to go with is H335. So, and the other thing is, I mean, I know it's kind of like they say it's a bad idea to load without like actual published official load data. Um, these loads are so light for 223 that I'm have zero concern about getting too high of pressures or anything like that. If anything, they're going to be lower pressures than uh, IMR4227 because they're slower burning powders. So, um, I don't I don't think there's any risk at all of these being unsafe or anything like that. So, no no concerns there. So, <clears throat> Also, um, somebody on this thread, the thread that I've been updating on Cast Bullets Forum, um, said that using a Dacron filler can actually uh, help the action cycle more reliably um, with like a, what with a lighter load that otherwise would not cycle. So I don't know if that's true or not, but it sounds like it's worth a try. Dacron filler cost me nothing, and uh, I've had some already that I was uh, kind of messing with for my Mosin de Gaunt. So um, I'm gonna try it, uh, and I, I understand Dacron filler is supposed to be able to kind of help your burn be more consistent which equals greater accuracy anyway so I mean it's gonna bump up the accuracy too then all the better that's great so um, the other thing I'm changing one of the other things I'm changing I'm trying a longer overall length for the cartridge so I was loading to what the manual said before which was um, 2.060 inches and then it looked really short um, part of that is just that it's a really stubby bullet because it's a flat point so it can't protrude into the throat of the rifle very far before it engages the rifling. Whereas a Spitzer has like an extra few millimeters of pointy that's not touching the rifling anyways because it's too small. Um, but uh, I did a little bit of testing to find what the max overall length is for my rifle with this bullet. And it's like 2.08. So it's barely any longer anyways. But uh, hey, why not? I'm going to try. I'm going to be loading to 2.075 inches. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, hopefully that should increase my accuracy just because, you know, seating closer to the lens is a better better for your accuracy, especially with cast. Uh, and then also, I wonder if maybe it's going to, I don't know if it's enough of a change to make any real difference here, but theoretically, um, uh, that expands the amount of case volume, so the pressure isn't as high up front, it doesn't spike as soon, um, but it also, but like, it will make it further down the barrel before fizzling out. So um, if you look at the the video from, or a couple of the clips from my last video of me actually at the range testing out the IMR4227, some of the lighter loads, when I pull the trigger, you can see some like smoke coming out of the, the bolt, coming out of like the, the area where the casing eject, even though it didn't even eject the casing. So I know that the gun is not like perfectly sealed tight with pressure, so if the pressure spikes early, it seems like some of it is just kind of squeaking out through the cracks and being lost instead of going forwards and cycling the action. So again, hopefully keeping the pressure spike later with the slower burning powder, the increase in overall length, um, 
those two things together I'm hoping will mean basically more pressure actually getting to the gas port which should increase my chances of reliable cycling. Um, oh, for kicks, by the way, with this next set of tests, um, aside from testing out a bunch of loads with H335, I'm going to just try one of them with IMR4227 just to, to try it. Um, I'm going to keep it at 13.0 grains, so that should be like really close to where it was really accurate with the first set of tests. Uh, and then <coughs> also I'm going to put a Dacron filler. So again, apparently that might help it cycle. I don't know. I'm not going to get my hopes up about this, but hey, if it works, great. It's worth a try. Um, cool. So, since I have not even bought H335 yet, um, if you read the post, I have a baby now. So, that's kind of crazy. And he's like 72 hours old right now. So, um, my time is a little bit dictated by what he wants. Um, and I have not been able to get out to Sportsman's Warehouse to buy any powder yet. But, uh... <coughs> so I, at the time of recording this, I haven't even bought the powder, but hopefully I can later this week, and uh, or I don't know, whenever I can, I will. So I'll load these all up. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I just wanted to maybe run you guys through my process, just for anyone who's confused. I wanted to make it super, super clear exactly what my process is of loading, and I got some really nice photos uh, to show you guys as well of what these bullets are looking like and stuff. So um, this first picture here. Uh, this is just a picture of the bullet right out of the mold. So I should I should uh, clarify right up front here. All of these photos are um, I w I don't know if anyone is a photographer, but I was using two light sources very close to the thing I'm photographing, and they're basically coming from either side of the of the object. So what that does. Um, is really highlights the texture of anything in the photo. So these bullets are pretty smooth, like they look terrible in these photos. Actually my brass does too, as you'll see. It looks like it's so dinged up and rough and I don't know, I guess maybe it is, but that's not really what it looks like to the naked eye. It's just the way I lit the photos is really emphasizing the imperfections in the bullets and in the coating and in the brass and everything else. So, uh, but hopefully it's really clear. So. This first photo uh, is just a bullet right out of the mold. The mold is dropping them kind of large, so I'm having a little bit of trouble putting them through the sizing die. It's just a regular Lee push through sizer. Um, and as you'll see in the next photo, actually, so this is after I size it. Before I do any looming or coating, I size it and install the gas check all in one operation. Um, and you can see it's mashing a lot of that lead into the lube grooves. Um, and it's kind of deforming the bullet a lot. And then, um, so I don't really care because I'm not using the lube grooves, but it just seems like it's taking a lot of force and it's deforming the bullet. And then most, unfortunately, the, the worst part about that is um, it's kind of like smearing my gas checks. I don't know how else to put it. But I think the ram on the push-through die is a tiny bit undersized. Um, so I don't know. I might I might return it to Lee or have him fix it or replace it or something like that because uh, it's like putting a little divot in the gas check because it's taking so much force to get it through and it seems like there's enough room around the edges of the ram for some of the aluminum to kind of like fin around the edges of the bullet on the base and that's I'm sure not conducive to good accuracy um, and then a bunch of these are even falling off too so I think what I'm gonna do in the future um, once I've used up these bullets that I've made is uh, I'll, I'll size it first without putting the gas check on. I don't know, I'll do some experimentation, but I might try um, gas checking after I powder coat. It seems like they size easier when they're powder coated versus when there's just bare lead. But this is what's happening right now, and you know what, I'm gonna shoot them because I have them, so whatever. <laughs> um, hopefully we'll uh, find a better way to get the gas checks on. I know a lot of people are recommending going to copper gas checks, but it kind of defeats the purpose because they're a lot more expensive than aluminum gas checks. And actually, I'm hoping to machine a die that I can punch my own and form my own aluminum gas checks out of sheeting. Um, and I don't know where to get, uh, like you get like the aluminum roof flashing. I don't know where to get the copper equivalent to that in thickness. So I think I'm going to stick with aluminum unless I just absolutely can't make it work, even though I'm sure copper are nicer. Um, so this next shot is just after I cover it in powder coat. So I'm doing the Elvis method where he heats the bullets up in the toaster oven first. Um, without putting anything on them. He just heats them up to like 140 degrees or so or so and then he uh, just tosses them in the powder coat and shakes them all around in a number five plastic. I'm not even using any plastic BBs or anything like that to generate the static and it seems to get a really good coating as you can see from this so that's working great for me um, and then I'm baking. Here's a here's a shot of the next or here's the next shot which is actually powder coated. Um, 
So they look good. Um, they're working really well. I love the clear powder coat. Man, it's miles ahead of, of the Harbor Freight Red. So shout out to Smoke. His powder coat is awesome. Um, in fact, when I I, I kind of want to try it with some other colors from him now because this was I was so impressed with the clear. And I love that the bullets come out looking like lead bullets instead of lipstick. It was kind of fun up front, but it got old. Anyway, um, here's the next shot. So this is just some dirty brass. This is what it looks like. And actually, this is a piece of brass from the last batch of tests with the IMR4227. Um, so I haven't done anything to it yet, but I just spray them with lanolin, um, like lanolin mixed with 99% isopropyl alcohol, do a regular full length size, um, and then wet tumble with lemon shine, dish soap, hot water for a couple of hours. I don't, I have steel pins. I used them once. It was more of a pain to separate them than like, I just wasn't worth the extra tiny bit of shininess. So I just tumble the brass alone with the lemon shine, the hot water and the dish soap and they come out looking great. And this photo doesn't really do it justice, but uh, here's here's one of the um, clean brass. It does look better than the dirty brass, but in real life, the difference is a lot more. Any of you guys who have ever wet tumbled, I'm sure you understand. Um, so I skipped a lot of the still photos of um, tiny steps that don't look very different. <laughs> so um, I didn't take a photo of after you know, seeding the primer or putting the powder in or anything like that. It wouldn't have looked any different. But for the purposes of anyone who wants to know, um, my, the, my process is after cleaning the, the brass, once I have clean, dry brass, I'll seat the primer um, and then I will flare the neck a little bit with the Lee Universal um, neck flaring die or neck expander die, I think it's called. Um, and then uh, seating, well, filling with the powder and if it's a Dacron load, putting the Dacron in, then seating the bullet and crimping with the regular factory crimp die. Um, crimping enough to remove the belling but not enough to swage the bullet down. So the lightest crimp I can get away with to make sure that the neck is straight. Um, so that's that's it. And um, this is what a finished round looks like. So that's this is what it looks like after it's ready to shoot. So they're kind of stubby. This bullet isn't like I talked about it before. I think this bullet isn't a spire point, so it doesn't protrude very far. Um, and I have to seat pretty short, so they look a little stubby. But I haven't had any trouble getting them to chamber or feed. Um, any feeding issues I think were just from short stroking. I don't think it had anything to do with rounds not um, going on the feed ramp correctly or anything like that so uh, that's that's it so I'm seating these to 2.075 inches um, test number two is gonna have 11 different groups <laughs> so it'll be about twice as big as test number one each group again will be 10 rounds um, they're gonna be I'm just gonna have kind of one odd group of that IMR4227 plus a filler it's gonna be 13 grains um, which is really right where it was most accurate so I don't know, maybe I'll get lucky and it'll cycle the action. I'm not going to get my hopes up though, but I'm, it's worth a try. And the rest of the groups, the other 10, are there's going to be five different charge weights of H335 ranging from 17.5 to 19.5 grains in half grain increments. And uh, and then for each charge weight, there's uh, a Dacron filler one and, and a regular one or a regular group. So we'll see actually in my rifle if the Dacron filler is improving cycling and or accuracy or not. But uh, anything I can do to get it to cycle at a lower velocity <laughs> is basically good. So um, so that's it. At the time of filming this, I haven't even bought the powder. Uh, I have to go to Sportsman's Warehouse. But my schedule these days, if you can believe it, is kind of dictated by my baby son. So uh, I have no idea when I'm going to get to load these up or I have no idea when I'm going to get to go to the range and shoot them, let alone. But uh, as soon as I do, I'll get some video of it and show you guys what we found. And hopefully we'll have a winner. I'm really hoping that test number three is just uh, dialing in the accuracy, basically. That's that's the hope. So that will be what we find out. Thanks for watching, guys.